news, everyone? You're obviously confused and aroused. Podcast for no reason. Today we will be discussing Futurama Season 2, Episode 16, Anthology of Interest 1, with your hosts, Tommy Roulette. How's it going? Pete Woodward. That's me. And I'm Rick Horchy. Joining us today is our special guest, Michelle Burlingame. How's it going? Good, good. How you doing? Good. Thanks for uh, being on the show. Mm-hmm. I, I don't take this personally, but who are you and why are you on our show? <laughs> well, I, you know my sister. Yes. That's kind of how this happened, Yeah, right? I'm a friend of Kelly's. Margarita? Yeah, Margarita Horchie. <laughs> okay. That's like a new nickname, though, right? That was just because she drank a lot of margaritas that night. I think it's a great nickname. Oh. I think she, she called herself Margarita. <laughs> oh, she gave herself yeah, that yeah, nickname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a self-diagnosed uh, nickname. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that makes a lot of sense, All right. then. Yeah. Um, Okay, I mean... So you're a big Futurama fan, and I know I that. Am. I know I you're a big actually, Simpsons fan, too. Yeah, I was actually listening to an episode of the Nerdist podcast, and Chris Hardwick said, hey, there's this Futurama podcast, Slurmcast, and I went, yeah, I'm going to download that, and I actually stopped that episode of Nerdist and downloaded your podcast, <laughs> and then as you were introducing yourselves, I said, wait a minute, <laughs> I know these people, sort of. <laughs> that's uh, That's kind of weird it was a little weird I, that's how things work though sometimes i know straight out of cleveland it's uh it's a blessing and a curse that nerdist bump because how it, is it a curse because i i am obsessed with numbers now and watching little points on a graph it's true week and they <laughs> go he, up he was I, uh showing strangers or people we barely knew like there were baby photos the graphs oh i do it all the time <laughs> still like, oh look we get this many this week and just look at look at all those. Why does everybody like Sean Jaundice so much? I don't know, but that was our uh, probably our single best performing episode post Nerdist. Yeah, I can't leave my house without getting mobbed now. <laughs> so, but that's just because of the neighborhood you live in. They're just trying to take your wallet. That's true. Also, yeah. Thomas Frankenstein. <laughs> what? <laughs> People are always mobbing him. The pitchforks and torches and stuff. Oh, you mean mobs are coming for Sorry, me? Sorry, I mean mob. And Stein's monster. <laughs> it's, 50, it's 50 white guys with machetes. <laughs> so this episode, yeah, we kind of were originally talking about trying to do a live episode for this one. Yeah, this is our we failed live episode. Don't, you don't need to show too much of uh, behind the curtain. Like, we never had... Uh, we need to show where we fail sometimes. We were planning it, and we, we do had that the whole week. thing together, and then people's dads kept dying, and time sort of got away from <laughs> us. Um. I enjoyed it though. I think there's a there's a lot going on for this episode. Just so you guys know, I'm I'm over Tom's death or Tom's dad's death, but I don't know if I'm I'm over my dad's death. I don't know if I'm over Tom's dad's death though. Let's no, let's not go there. I think what you guys, if what <laughs> if you should have a slap fight to see who misses their dad more, and or then who then, misses then, the then other who misses more. the other one's dad more. I still have his ashes in my house, so. I give, well, I still have my dad's him. ghost in his house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he comes in and moves Checkmate. your jacket every other week. <laughs> uh, on the Jumbotron, was that oh. Felix the Cat again? No. Oh, I this I really want to talk about this. Okay. Uh, okay. It's Bosco, right? Bosco. Bosco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bosco. Uh, from Nickelodeon. Remember that? <laughs> on the, like Nick Jr. or Nick and Knight or whatever. They used to play all the old uh, Bosco. Bosco sounded so familiar to me, I started Googling it. Turns out, you know, I used to love Tiny Toon, Tiny Toon Adventures yeah. when it was on. Mm-hmm. There was a character, Bosco, and it turned out to be like this dog, like old, like 1930s cartoon that was a dog that yeah. helped Babs. Like He, men- ki- he like, kind of looked like the Animaniacs. He was like a... Like right. A- right. That, I think that's where the Animaniacs yeah. came from. But in reality, it was this racist, black-faced yeah. person... And all wait, these wait, 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 cartoons. wait. Bosco was a minstrel? Yes. And oh you, you know God. what? You saying that, I'm just now realizing that. Like, yes. Like, I did, when that, they used to play um, Bosco all the time on, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, on, uh, it was either like the KKK channel? Like the, the primetime Nickelodeon slot, like right before they started Nick at Night, um, time wise. Like, I think that started at like eight or nine or 10 or whatever. And they would play a lot of Bosco because they just, you know, it was cheap and they had like a ton of it. 
and they stopped. And I remember there was this um, uh, Nickelodeon commercial, you know, for the shows that were on. And it was like, you know, with more Looney Tunes and more this and goodbye, Bosco. And then it went like around him or whatever. And I was like, oh, that sucks. I like those old cartoons. And I'm just realizing, oh, it was the late 80s, early 90s. And they were like, yeah, we can't have this but anymore. But that's, that's it's the racist. part I don't understand. Like, you guys are younger than me. Mm hmm and I don't remember this at all. So how did this? Did you have cable in the, that time? Yeah, period? yeah, yeah. But how did this? Did like, you watch Nickelodeon? You were in college. Yes. When I was a kid, I watched Nickelodeon. But it was, uh, you know, like I up through. I remember the first run of the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Yeah, but you no. Know, it's, but but I, I, what I mean is more along the lines of like they had already kind of scrubbed a lot of Tom and Jerry when I was a kid of all of the like racist undertones that were in that so how did this cartoon that was like thoroughly racist wind up on primetime basic cable i don't know i don't remember what what Horchie's talking about at all i just remember the named like when i looked up what the cartoon was the name bosco and when from i tiny googled tunes. it and it was from tiny tunes because i remember this episode that had this dog and then that's when i researched back to figure out what it exactly was and everything i don't remember bosco being on tiny tunes was it just one episode or was yeah it, it was like no it was just like one okay. episode did you look up or did you michelle i didn't look too far into oh. the the short little clip that was on the jumbotron because it I would be kind of like a waste of time bosco <laughs> i did recognize bosco but um i think a big majority of those cartoons were just inherently racist. Just oh. so many. Like, it was just so accepted that, like, hey, this is funny, right? But it, it was either it that just, or, like, so psychedelic like schizophrenic yeah. freak out. Like, we're, there's no middle ground. Where I was getting to is it led me down this rabbit hole. Uh, and then I watched, on YouTube. watched yeah. the 11 censored cartoons from uh, mm. Looney Tunes that really? are, like, banned. Fall and down the bad rabbit hole. They are, it's, I mean, We've talked about it, this before, not on the podcast, but there's that one where there's the uh, blackface guys uh, singing, and we both remembered it was from a cartoon that we both remember, and we yes. both had like on VHS or we saw when we were kids, and uh, we didn't know that that's what it was. Right, and, right. But all in all, like a couple of them, I just remember moments of these, like seeing them when I was younger, somewhere before somebody was like, "We need to not show these to people anymore," or yeah. whatever. And the actual bits in the cartoon, they end up reusing in like later cartoons to make, but not in a <laughs> so racial. They, okay. So they kept the thing. jokes like, and just got rid of the. Yeah, there's funny. I mean, it's it's a lot of like just classic old cartoon humor that's going on, but it's just, just so inappropriate. So inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, so what was happening to Bosco? It looked like some kind of giant. Fish was chasing him or something? He got trapped on an island, and the islanders were, like, attacking him. That's, That's basically it. the... It's called Bosco Shipwrecked. So it's, like, Castaway? Or maybe this new King Kong Skull Island situation? Son of Kong. I had no interest in seeing that until I saw the trailer last week. And uh, John C. Riley might be reason to go see it. To see what? Yeah, I'd... This... Uh, Son of Kong Skull Island business. Oh, I didn't even know about it. Well, there's there's a Steve Brule Easter egg in the trailer because John C. Riley is this whacked out like uh, you know island scientist character, but he's wearing a jacket that says "Good for your health" on the back. Oh yeah, is it a comedy or is it? I I think it's you it know like the other remake. Jack Black isn't in it, but he was in the first one, so I think that level of hijinks is to be expected. But John C. Riley's providing the laughs this time around, and then there's lots of explosions. I don't think Jack Black's character was supposed to be funny, and I think any character that Jack Black no, plays he was is that was it funny. was he was playing a dramatic role. Um, How much of uh, Bosco um, do you think affects what happened to uh, the characters in this episode of Futurama? Zero, zero percent. Let's talk about it for fifteen more minutes. I just thought it was a, a nice tidbit about how how racist, racist the history of animation be. is. And it's the like fact working. That Michelle knew what that it was Bosco. Yeah, how did you know that? By the way, do you remember Just Bosco? Recognized from... it. Yeah, I oh, mean, okay. I, my parents were really big into cartoons. I have pretty young parents. R racist cartoons? No, or just, regular just cartoons, cartoons in general. Okay. So racist <laughs> and non-racist cartoons. I, I had a lot of um, 
VHS tapes like Betty Boop. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of those are super yeah, racist. So, totally. uh, so the, the Tiny Toons thing, um, that's mm. just what I, I didn't have cable when I was a kid, but that's what I would wake up and, on Saturday mornings and pop in, you know, a Betty Boop VHS tape, so. That'll do it. So before we actually get actually into the episode, mm -hmm. like, w as far as a Futurama fan, were you, how, like, where were you at when this came out? Yeah, like, in how did you get into it? I was fairly young. And like I said, I have young parents. Um, I was probably, so in 1999, I was 11. I'm 28. So um, I did watch it when it was out. I can't guarantee that I understood <laughs> most of the yeah. jokes, but I knew it, I was a huge Simpsons fan. And um, I was like, hey, this is sort of like the Simpsons. I'm going to watch this. And my parents being the cool young parents that they were, of course, yeah, go ahead and watch that show that's probably way over your head. You <laughs> won't that's get great. the jokes uh, anyway. A show like that, that's how The Simpsons was for me, where, you know, I enjoyed it. I'm like, oh, this is great. And then every couple of years revisiting it, getting jokes that you didn't get before, you it know. It gets better. Every yeah. time you watch it, the, the more that you, uh, like, I, I watched it when it was originally on. And then when I did end up getting cable, I watched it in syndication. And I watched it when I went to college, when it was on Adult Swim. Mm -hmm. And then when Comedy Central brought it back, I watched it. And I've pretty much never stopped watching it since it was on. And every time I watch it, I, it's, I remember like, oh, I completely forgot about this episode or I forgot that this thing ever happened and it's kind of like, it's new. <laughs> it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Were your parents fans of it or no? Did they um, not watch they it? They watched it. My dad probably watched it a little more than my mom did, but um, they they watched it. I remember thinking that it was a lot better than Family Guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> Amen. it was. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I, although, I mean, to be fair, that's, I'm going to probably make some enemies here, but I don't think that's a really good Who needs them? Yeah, I, I just, I never really caught the Seth Tom doesn't have button. enough mobs mm -hmm. coming at him when he leaves his house. <laughs> <laughs> enough moms coming at him? <laughs> He's got that plenty of moms coming <laughs> after him all the time. Uh, the thing longer, I, I, what I really liked about this episode to begin with is I felt like they, they managed the... Um, Treehouse of Horrors. Yeah, the Treehouse of, like of Horror thing where it kind of broke it up into the mini stories. And... Um, I thought the transitions were good with a nice wraparound at the end and things. But well, not just that, but also a chance to have stories. Where That was a great thing about the Treehouse of Horrors. And when Futurama came out, I felt like, oh, this is their, you know, because they get to do Treehouse of Horrors once a year. Futurama was there. Oh, we can have all this ridiculous stuff happen all the time. Story-wise, we can't just, like, kill off characters, you know, like they do on, on Treehouse. But uh, I thought that's what Futurama was originally. And then Futurama got to have their Treehouse of Horrors in this, you know, anthology of interest and do you know, a story that d doesn't really happen and you can have, you know, world changing things that don't matter and by it, the end of, you know, before the commercial break. It came out like it wasn't any like holiday. It was like out in May in like 2000. Yeah. Like there was nothing. It was just another episode, but this is how they did it, which is, yeah. I always liked these episodes a lot. Um, the, uh, just the thing longer kind of, it's exactly what I'd expect a professor to invent. It's just, it's such it's a, a long finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and like, just so stupidly simple. Uh, the only thing that surprised me didn't have like a little pincher on the end or something, but like, just the fact that he could like point across the room with a stick that fits on your hand was great. And, and the fact that he kept whacking people in the face with it and stuff was a, an added bonus. Um, but in true professor fashion, um, you know, he like buries the lead where he's like, oh, well, this isn't as exciting or this is way more exciting than my what if machine, which <laughs> did they even say when he invented that? Like it was just a piece of junk in his shop that he never it just was there. Yeah. He has a lot of things in his lab that. But it wasn't very long. That was the problem. No, exactly. He's invented a lot of things. That he's 160 just... years old, at least. We have, we have yet to see a percentage of his. Well, I mean, inventions. we've seen a percentage of his inventions. It's just a very small percentage. I mean, a full percentage. Like well, a, a, full per, a full percentage. No, are you sure? We've probably seen 17% of his inventions. Has that been cataloged? No, I'm just making up numbers. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, so a lot of... Uh, I think we should stop and go back and talk about Bosco some more. <laughs> Well, we could talk about a bunch of inconsistencies with Bender, if you'd like, instead. 
Yeah, let's get to the uh, the first. Can small bender fly? Because big bender can fly. No. No. He was flying because of his ass propulsion, though. Right. Yeah. So I but, bet if small bender tried to fly, he could probably fly. But small bender has a brick uh, laying machine, right? Right. Uh huh. So why didn't big bender have a brick laying machine? Bender so? never flies. Because it's what if Bender was 500 feet tall? They built him so he could fly to another planet. Yeah, they built, they weren't even on Earth. They were, this was a Bender that was 500 feet tall on a planet that was inhabited by tinier Benders. Also in another dimension. That, yes. From, from the one that you find all your inconsistencies in. That Bender was clearly invented or uh, made up of just bent girders. I got that. Because the small bender, because that's all they can do. Yeah. So. So was this uh, particular section kind of supposed to be a play on the Iron Giant movie? Yes. I don't. Okay, that's what I, I thought mean, when I watched it because it was. I mean, Iron Giant. I wrote down here was 1999, so I the, it immediately reminded me of Iron Giant. So I looked up the date that it came out, but it was very much with the Fry Bender relationship. It like exactly like that. I didn't even think movie. to check if that came out beforehand, but like it reminded me of that too. And mm -hmm. then on the Futurama Infosphere, and I don't know how much of that is when you see like a, you know, the little trivia stuff at the bottom of that, how much of that is just whoever's writing that throwing it in there like Wikipedia or is it backed up by, you know, DVD commentary or, or yeah, exactly. I don't know. It might I, be, I, I don't I didn't know watch the commentary. You uh, might've, I, I, uh, did you look at the sources from the page? Do they, do they have that in the Infosphere? In Wikipedia, it's a Wikipedia do. page. So it's a Wikipedia oh, type, no, I or have, wiki type page. I, I, it, it's pretty amazing that I take the time to like look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so is the Iron Giant some well regarded? Yeah. Okay. I never yeah. saw it. it I little known, because I was little known you, fact. you have an eight or however old daughter. You need to watch the Iron Giant with her. It, yeah. Um, if you don't. Am I going to sob like I do at a Pixar movie? Yes. You might, yeah. Yeah, you might. <laughs> wow. We're really... I, I'm sorry. We're getting out there. So I, I um, does Small Bender spit oil? Yeah. I mean, he'll... He's thrown up oil and... Or will. Or I mean, that's... So that's or, that's still on... Yeah, we're not, we're not having a whole discussion of... This is just what if Bender was 500 feet tall. So... Nothing of Bender regular size matters. He's 500 feet yeah, tall. Count. Everything <laughs> is different. <laughs> it depends on how literal you want to be. And personally, he was in, he was created on another Bender. planet. Not Bender. That's not Bender. That's what if Bender was 500 feet tall? Okay, so like, if this is they did this the kind of thing like Venom is not. A, I, I know you're not. A, I, no, no. Listen, never, I, I feel like we could parse this language like Bill Clinton and be like, but what is if is Bender is a. I, I, it's fine. I, this is I don't an alternative to... universe, so it's bullshit to begin with. Yeah, and an, then more bullshit an on alternate top of that. universe. Yes. Okay. Um, the, there's. I, you're not a comic book nerd, but no. Marvel did a whole series of comics that are what if, and they're all like just alternate universes of different superheroes. Yeah, they did a lot. Died of, it would or, be a one-off of like, oh, what if, um, you know, this. You, know, you don't have to explain what if comics to me. I was probably reading them before you guys. Were so you, it. you're not allowed to compare any of these characters. To I'm the just, characters. I'm asking actual questions. That's all. I'm saying the big one does this. Can the small one do this? That's all. Probably not. Is there a is there a chicken flavored cigarette? Because that might get me to start smoking again. <laughs> really? I don't think I would want a chicken flavor cigarette. If you could just inhale the flavor of fried chicken without having to eat it. No. And get the added benefit of, like, nicotine and weight loss and ultimately cancer. No, I don't cancer. think food and cigarettes go together. And no, it, they do. In a pleasing way. No, I mean, After. I, don't think the, I don't think you want to. Isn't that the whole point of, like. I would never want to eat food like, that tastes like cigarettes and vice versa. Isn't so that the want... whole point of, like, hookah bars or vaping, like, Flavored Asking the wrong guy. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I mean that isn't that like the attraction of that where it's like this tastes like cherries or this tastes like uh, there. I saw a guy who was he was vaping this thing. And I'm like, what is that? Is it like Skittles? And he's like, no, no, it's Swedish Fish. Like this, you're kind of changing my mind because I do love chicken. Yeah. So if you could have like a fried chicken vaporizer, 
I feel like uh, I would just want to eat fried chicken at that point. I, like, well, yeah. when when don't you well want to eat fried chicken? Just never. <laughs> like, just always will eat fried chicken. I cooked it would just nice, be kind of uh, unfair because then you'd be like, why am I not having fried chicken? And right it would now? probably make you more hungry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> would it you're not getting that like, texture in your mouth either. Mm. Oh, now I want fried chicken. Didn't KFC make like a suntan lotion that was fried chicken scented? And I think they had yeah. And I think they had candles that were chicken scented. I feel like I remember the candles thing. Like yeah, the the and body oil. Yeah, that I sounds like some Yankee peddler bullshit. There might be it's, it's a real. the Yankee candles. It's real fried chicken. I, I I will get to the bottom of this. All right. Well, Pete's distracted. Let's move on to talking about the episode of Futurama. Uh, I don't know. Bender flies. <laughs> it's they real. Play Iron Man. A, KFC's extra crispy sunscreen. Oh I my told god! You. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up, man. But if you did, you'd be a billionaire. That's so I wish smart. I had I, it up. W- w- would she? Uh, how did that do? I think it sold out immediately. Did, uh, really? He just ordered twenty yeah. cases of it. Well, I mean, is it still <laughs> like uh, around? I mean, it's a suntan lotion that turns you into a cannibal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great yeah. idea. It's brilliant. But uh, so, did Bender kill Hanson? Yes. Yeah, he did. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You're probably better to ask this. You're a lot closer I was to that, that age, age group. Yeah. Like, were you a big Hanson fan? I was not a huge Hanson fan. I was never a little really bit, like though. a little bit. I remember one Christmas I got a Hanson poster and I just hung it on my wall because I felt like I was like obliged to hang it up. <laughs> like no, <laughs> I, I, I was never into like NSYNC or the Backstreet Boys or any of that nonsense. You were, um, did you deface it by drawing mustaches or blacking out teeth or something on it? I don't think I did. I think I just had it up and didn't care. Come on. <laughs> you were into, you? Everyone was into Taylor. Do you because guys... Some, even some dudes thought it was a girl. Was and the even the, then the girls the knew one. it was a dude. So <laughs> did you there ever, were so many people that were into Taylor Hansen. Do you remember that episode of Family Guy where they did that and Joe thought that... No, or Quagmire. Somebody, one of the yeah, kids. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Quagmire. Um, uh, high school, so Hanson came out as, you know, whatever, sophomore, junior, whatever. Uh, that happened to, we're sitting at a table, me and like, you know, five or six other guys or whatever. Uh, and one guy, one kid was like, yeah, whatever, that girl's cute. And we're like, ah, no, that's, you know, we, we thought he was joking. And then he thought we were joking. And then he like didn't believe us. It took us like the whole lunch period to be like, no, it, it's a guy. <laughs> and But his, but the name is Taylor. And, and Taylor. I, re- I remember being like, it's like, a yeah, girl's name. Yeah, dude, this guy, you know, whatever. But, like, when that video came out, for a couple of days, I thought that that was a girl. And then my older brother was like, no, that's that's a guy. That's I mean, three brothers. I'm sure one of the first time I saw that video, I thought it was a girl. It was before all their voices changed. I mean, it was, uh, I'm certain that was built into the sales pitch for those guys. So, Zoidberg gets duped into... First of uh, all, <laughs> I need to... I, I don't remember why Bender... Went started going crazy. What happened, or like what? Why was he smashing things? Didn't he, he say just, that his mission mission was to kill all humans? All of a sudden, that was at the end. Oh, no! Before that, he was just wasn't he doing just shitty things? He fell on cry? Hanson. They were playing, mm-hmm. and then he fell on Hanson, mm-hmm. and then I don't remember they what must happened. Must have mistaken that as an attack and started going after him. So it turned into like a King Kong thing, mm-hmm. and he started smashing buildings and whatnot. But the, I, I, so then they. Oh yeah, they started attacking him, and then oh, Zap Brannigan and Kiff show up. Yeah, and when he steps on him, I, you know, it. This is it was pretty dense. They had to get this whole story out in like six and a half minutes. Okay, so they trick Zoidberg with a guinea pig. We need a guinea pig, and it's the <laughs> guinea pig it's is guinea the pig trap to feed for him. Zoidberg, and he eats it because he's like, oh, two, <laughs> two meals, meals in a week, week for Zoidberg. It was brilliant. Was anybody sad that the guinea pig got yes. eaten? Yes. <laughs> Do you think, so like when Zoidberg gobbles something up like that, do you think it's possible that it survived in his gullet? No. No? Why? You think he just gets like eviscerated immediately while going down his big weird throat? I don't know. He probably has a bunch of different weird alien organs. Okay, but but, all right, so look. You get to see him autopsy later. Yeah, but hang hang on. So he swallows the the guinea pig, and then they use the giganto ray to make him... Oh, are you asking if the guinea pig might have... So, A, would the guinea pig grow in proportion so that Zoidberg now has a giant guinea pig inside him? Or 
because the guinea pig was not affected directly with the ray, would the guinea pig be the regular size and be able to escape? That guinea pig was digested before he the, even grew. Okay, that's really depressing. Poor guinea pig. It's that universe that they're in. All right. But when, it, when Zoidberg and Bender start fighting, it made me wonder, has anyone ever made a... Um, like a skin Why for the video game Rampage. The huh? You remember the video game yeah. Rampage? Has there, is there a skin out there somewhere where you can play like Bender and Zoidberg? Because that would be awesome. Nope. Get on it, nerds. Please. I'd love to see that. You, I'm sure you wouldn't get sued at all by Fox. They wouldn't care at all, right? This was my least favorite story of the... Of the three? Yeah. Of the three. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. Even when Zoidberg destroys the Apollo, because he he's <laughs> once blew me off of open mic. <laughs> yeah, and and it's the second time they brought that up. Well, he yeah, they, did get booed. Yeah, they, and he got den he get got denied a, a loan at Chase Bank too. <laughs> That's the part I love. He's just now that he's empowered as a giant monster, he's so vengeful. Who's big now? I like when uh, they're fighting and Fry asks uh, Bender if he wants to make Shrinky Dinks. That was yes. one of my favorite What are Shrinky Dinks? <laughs> what are Shrinky Dinks? Uh, are you serious? They no. were, you'd get this I know sheet. what Shrinky Dinks are, but some people might not okay. know what they are. Uh, I used to get, I used to have He-Man ones when I was a kid. Uh, you would get this sheet of like this thick paper and <clears throat> it was cut them. Well, whatever, this thin, whatever it was, this um, plastic, whatever. And you would cut them and there'd be like a shape maybe about, I don't know, like um, like three or four inches long or whatever, like a, of, let's say, you know, Skeletor. And then you would put them in the oven, and, and you know, with with your parents' help, like it said in the commercial. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it would shrink them down. It would cook them, and then they would be about a quarter or a third the size. And then you'd put them on a little stand. Oh, before that, you would color them with uh, with uh, pencils, yep. colored pencils. And then are they that was that the was toys in the eighties? Exact opposite of um, remember the that things when you're that playing, you would hit uh, with water and they would grow. Yeah, it was. Much. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Did you guys all play with them? Yeah, and yeah. I had those too, the dino or the dinosaurs that you would hit with water and they would grow like a little but bit. But the shrinky dinks would never shrink uniformly and they'd be all like they'd be a little and wavy yeah. and yeah. And I had the weird. poor the poor man's shrinky dinks where we would put a uh a single size chip bag in the microwave <laughs> and then it would shrink up to a tiny oh, yeah. size. I did a Seriously? similar thing with the uh, styrofoam tray from the bottom of like meat. You could just those cut shrink? those up. Those shrink. Oh. But just be careful so you that put you're a not tinier poisoning piece of yourself meat on with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a I would color it and everything. Chop. It's exactly the same as Shrinky Dinks. But it releases people. chlorine gas. <laughs> but as long as you don't breathe it indirectly, you'll you're be fine. fine. So there's a bunch of levels of Fry and Bender or wanting to have Bender play Shrinky Dinks then because Bender is giant and Shrinky Dinks then shrinks smaller. Oh, I didn't even realize that that was probably the joke. I just thought of that yeah. right now. Does, Did you guys already? No. Okay. Does Giant Bender have a magical now. chest cavity too? No, because a building falls through it and he dies. <laughs> That's what I was wondering about. But came through the back and not the front. It doesn't matter. It does matter. He died because he's a 500-foot <laughs> bender. <laughs> I like the mislead into that too. That he was, uh, it sounded like it was going to be, what if he was human? Yeah. Which later, later, they. Anthology of Interest 2. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get to that. Thanks for the spoilers, guys. The one thing I was wondering about when they come to the end of that little part of the, the story is the uh, uh, more Tales of Interest thing. Is that part of the what if machine? Yeah. That guy's voice. So does that come back? Like that's just when when it's done showing you this. Yeah, my favorite one. In. I thought it was going to be this one. It's the next one where uh, it's the second one is the you watched it, you can't unwatch it, <laughs> and that's something that you know <laughs> one of those things that uh, you know the Burnses and Kaplan etc. say all the time. So we move into the second story. Fry is so dumb. Because he pours cereal in it because he's and impulsive, milk, and then eats it off the top of his head. It's Admiral Crunch. Yes, but it's it, it's so dumb. He eats it and then he slices bananas into I, it. And like, I like that's that. after. He's it needed doing more. It. That Bender was so <laughs> excited. He was like, "Go, man, go!" And then uh, later with the turkey and you know. But Leela bought green boots. Well, because she asked, "What if 
I was just, just a little more impulsive. A little just more. a little. Just slightly. Just a green a slip. <laughs> real, real quick, before I forget this question later, instead of waiting to all three of them, Michelle, what was your favorite? Do you have a favorite of the three of these? Oh, my favorite was probably the last one. It's Mine fries, too. fries, what if? Yeah. Yes, also. Pete? Um... I don't know if I liked a particular story more than the other. I think the Fry one had some better jokes, or at least jokes that I resonated with more. So a non-answer is your yeah, answer? Yeah, always. That's great. As someone who's a little more impulsive than normal, Leela buys some fancier shoes. Um, the green stripes did offset her. I mean, I thought it was a nice accessory. <laughs> Here's right? what I feel like. Okay, so she bought new boots. Mm -hmm. But the professor is the one that all of a sudden decided that he needed to have an heir. The professor well, already, already has an heir. heir. Thank you. <laughs> and he's in the episode. Yeah. Not, in, not in this uh, alternate universe. Yes, he's right. In, yeah, Qbert is in, is he's the, in end? the Well, no, I mean, we, but we have to assume anything uh, inconsistent with the story, we have to assume mm -hmm. right. that Well, he that's does justify it because he says everybody else is too impulsive, but not Leela, not uh, yeah. boring, Good old. Yeah, not see, that's, spontaneous well, he even Leela. Was he, he, what does he call her? He's old, predictable, dull as dishwater, Leela. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yes. there's, dish there's a ton of inconsistencies uh, um, in this, and especially in Fry's, uh, where, you know, all the stuff that happens later with the universe and this right. and time travel and it, um, <clears throat> that can all be, like, you know, uh, dismissed by, by saying, like, oh, well, this is, you know, this alternate uh, universe that this didn't really happen, or if it did, it's, it's um, you know, not real. Uh, but, like, oh, I forgot my point. Um, oh, my God. I just remembered something, though, that ties together a whole tangential discussion we had, like, five minutes ago. Uh, do, on Nickelodeon, back in the day, Remember, we were all kids, Nickelodeon. Do you remember you can't do that on television? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There was a gag on that once about lip gloss that tasted like fried chicken, and the girl put it on, and her boyfriend bit her lip. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. It's cool. life imitating art. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I knew that's why it sounded familiar. Cool and I. Cool story. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Oh, Dayquil and coffee, man. It's the best. What are the point of man-eating anteaters? At that point, would they not just be called man-eaters? Oh, I didn't even think They'd of that. They'd get sued by Hall & Oates. I was <laughs> thinking that that's why Hall & Oates came up with that song. Because they, it's a song about a man-eating anteater? Right. Would it be... Is Aardvark... I mean, I know that's the name of the animal, but is that it like... It kind of sounds like Art Garfunkel. It does, but but it's a Dutch... Well, is it Dutch or is it Afrikaan? I don't care. I don't care. I'm just... I'm wondering if aardvark means like anteater in that language or if that could be changed into something like manvark or something or aardman. That's all I was wondering about. But it's weird that the professor had the little Buffalo Bill lotion in the basket pit just sitting in the basement of the uh, Planet Express office, right? It reminded me of that movie. I think it's um, uh, the Thunderball. Pit. No, the Pit, where the kid in the wheelchair goes into the. Well, he goes and finds like trolley logs mm -hmm. in a pit in the forest, and then he like throws people down in there to yeah. feed them. He's like an autistic kid. Mm -hmm. So by that definition, trollologs. Trollologs. That's what they're called. Trollologs. I feel like you're making. I'm this up. no. no I that's swear a movie. to God, no. Yeah, yeah. It's, a it's called the pit. horror movie. Not you, to be confused with the gate where they find a pit in their backyard and it's right. full of other little demons. Right. But, but um. So yeah, Leela, impulsive, buys those boots. Yeah. And they kick the professor and kill him. Well, that's okay. So, the, I, I did she really murder him, or or were the boots possessed? Ant, no, did the ant eaters? No, murder she murdered him. him. I think. Uh, Man, she, would that be manslaughter, or would that be? No, that was well. It it was. It might be like third degree. Michelle, murder you're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I I think she kicked him into the pit. Therefore, she started the chain reaction of. 
the man eating ant eaters eating the professor. So really, she did kill what him. What degree murder is that, though? That, we should have asked her murder. sister that. That's a uh, cartoon. Yeah, cartoon murder. <laughs> yeah, because the professor's fine, and the they don't eat any of his clothes, right? They just eat all of his flesh and leave the skeleton and the glasses there at the end. Because yeah. they're ant eaters. Like, while they're eating him, she says, "Oh, what have I done?" And <laughs> she <laughs> told you, "You killed me. You've killed me." I. So, and then this sets off this crazy chain reaction where Leela goes on a murder spree, um, to, because she can't. She can't let anyone know that she killed the professor, so she keeps killing everyone else to cover her tracks. But is the unspoken subtext of this that the impulsive green boots that she bought are possessed and they affect her? No. Nope. Are you sure? No. Yeah. This, this is, is merely a what really if. Stupid idea. <laughs> what if Lila was a little bit more impulsive, and this is what would happen? And then she'd start murdering being... people. Yes. Like... Exactly. It's. Uh... Pete, what if you were a little less. Uh, Annoying. Annoying. <laughs> I don't know. You would probably kick Horchie down into a man-eating, anteater pit. I'd never do that. That's because sounds, of your that's a horrible way to die. New Air Jordans that you got. Because oh you were God. a little less annoying with your kids. I don't think I'm allowed to wear Air Jordans. I just, uh, I don't. But then bad for my arches. Zoidberg steps up in this one where he wants to solve this case. Yeah, because that was one of my has, favorite. Uh, what was Hermes flushing though? When he, oh, obviously yeah. he called the his manwich, his his manwich and his cookies. <laughs> that, and milk. Yeah, that was that was a good. I'm glad you mentioned that was one of the many little uh, Hermes uh, almost <laughs> references. sweet references. Sweet giant ant eater of Santa Anita. <laughs> I'm glad somebody made a note. Did you make a note of that? I did. <laughs> of what? The weed thing? Or of, the other no, thing? of what, what Hermes said, because it's the sweet oh, yeah. whatever. But he, you know, they they use his patois to come up with a funny alliteration. And it's fun. So he also had the, uh, it was the professor's will was a video will. And the video was of Leela oh, kicking yeah. the professor down into the pit. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, why wouldn't he use a hologram machine? Because there was a video. It was a video, Will. It's uh, what if... I, this is merely <laughs> what if Leela was a little bit more impulsive. So everything that happens is this is because Leela was a little bit more impulsive. <laughs> I, that's, that's how you have to do it, right? That's how these episodes are going, right? You're that just, explains everything. You're just yeah. being a, a, an apologist. I'm not being an apologist. I mean, <laughs> I'm just explaining to you. I am negating it's, all your questions about this because they all see, stem back It doesn't back matter. To, it just what, doesn't matter. If. Well, okay, why was the stripe on, the boot, on her boots green? Why weren't they red? Who gives a shit? Like, As because the, they were green. The green would look better with her hair. Because if it was red, Leela wouldn't be a little more impulsive. Would be or wouldn't it be? Wouldn't be. Maybe she would have been more impulsive. She was a little bit more. No, I'm impulsive. just saying it doesn't matter. That's that was my point. It does matter though. No, it doesn't. All right. So Scruffy, this is the first time that Scruffy no. talks. No. No, but Zoidberg has degrees in murderonomy and, and murderology. murderology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I believe we already said that. No, we didn't. We said he stepped up to solve the crime, but we didn't give his credentials. But that was that was after. So. Leela kills Hermes, then Bender walks in on her trying to shove Hermes' oh, right, yeah. body parts down the, dr the I was trying to remember who was next, yeah. But Leela kills Hermes as Zoidberg is interrogating them. <laughs> oh, the and Man-Eater. Man yeah. Who are you and trying to protect? Man-Eater man number two? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then How you can you hear... How do you spell that? <laughs> you hear... Uh, oh, yeah, he gives them a the little tongue, like... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 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 you can hear Hermes in the background getting ha hacked to bits. Yeah. And, and then she microwaves. My torso. <laughs> you are hacking off my torso. Well, it was. It was like, what are you hacking off now? Is that my? Is it torso? my torso? <laughs> it is my torso. Um. So then, yeah. Then Bender. She gets uh, microwaved to death. Yeah. Totally impossible. I prefer. I prefer the term extortion. X makes it sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> is if you bash open the door of a microwave, doesn't it? Would that stop working? I've never. I mean, I've never. I think tried if it's it. the glass. Yeah, I don't. I don't. 
I, mean, I don't it, think the microwave would know that the yeah. glass was broken because it sees that the door is latched or knows that the door is latched. But is there some kind of like... I don't know. you got a microwave in there. Let's try. <laughs> yeah, I just... I, I've always wondered that. Let's shoot out one of your cats. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're not mine. Do you have a guinea pig? <laughs> no, just three. Because Tom's going to eat it, and then we're going to shoot microwaves <laughs> at him. <laughs> I did have a, a roommate that had a microwave that you could, it was so old that you could just open it, and it would continue to microwave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it was it was just made that way. It was like, um, was it the, the science oven? For, was it is that oh, American shit. Hustle? Oh, wow. where like, yeah, it was like from, <laughs> it was old, and it was just scary. And did they get that? As... It, it was just a roommate of mine had that. Did um, they buy it as an antique, or did they, was, like, just it, have it for? A long time. Passed down from family oh, member wow. to family member. So it wasn't like they were microwave. like, oh, I'm buying this because this is this cool right, microwave. Right. It was that... just this old microwave that his family members had had. And like you couldn't cook microwave popcorn in it because the bag would just catch fire oh, yeah? immediately. <laughs> it was so dangerous. I had to like tell myself to turn it off before I opened it because I just got so used to like oh, yeah. modern convenience, not microwaving my guts every time I open the microwave door. Have you, you ever seen those old commercials when microwaves first came out and they would say you could cook a turkey in it? And yeah, yeah. like it, they were literally ovens. Yeah, microwave. I ovens, mean you. Yeah. You can, it just won't be good and it'll take yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, but they try to advertise it as yeah. like, oh, and it's just as good as an oven, just It faster. had to weigh over 150 pounds. Are you sure pounds. it wasn't just it an was... x-ray machine? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I ate out of it for quite a while. <laughs> and now you glow in the dark. It all worked out. I, you could have hold up like photographic <laughs> film behind you. Was this in like an just... apartment complex? No. It was no. just a house? It was a house, yeah. Did oh, you ever okay. fight robots with it? No, not that I can remember. <laughs> Oh, well, would there, have been a great test. Was your roommate Did, doing we science experiments <laughs> in the house? Like, was there a locked basement room that you couldn't go in? It's funny that you would mention that because that was the other roommate that actually did build all these crazy, like, Tesla coil chess boards. And it's weird. Weird. Uh, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> If you don't want to give an address, what city did this happen in? Oh, Lakewood, a few blocks away. Oh, shit. (laughs) Was there meth involved at all? No. So there's no, like, tweaker uh, (laughs) steampunk inventions going on or anything like that? This was just straight up, like, antique cooking appliances. And that's that's really, that's scary. Because I remember microwave screws coming out, but I don't remember. You could just, like, open them up, and yeah. I'm going to tan <laughs> while I cook my popcorn. <laughs> That'll be just fine. And then everybody gets melanoma in your house, and nobody knows why. Okay, and then Hubert is there. So what the fuck? The professor is saying, I need an air. He already has an air. The air is actually already there. He's Pete. too impulsive. This is what if Leela was a little bit more impulsive. So therefore, if Leela was a little bit more impulsive... The professor would not have picked Hubert as his heir. He would have created him, and maybe it was a mistake because Leela did something, and she was a little bit too impulsive. Can and you guys tell me what's going on? I my brain is zoned Pete out just through, uh, like you know when somebody gets tortured and eventually like <clears throat> they can't they can't feel the pain anymore. Like I can't hear Pete when he talks anymore. So I don't I don't know what what you what were. What do responding you think to. Zoidberg would taste like? Lobster. Good yes. lobster or bad lobster? <laughs> Fry. At the end, Fry bites in just into his claw. Yeah, it well, it bothers me. Yeah, yeah. It's just like he takes the end well, of it wait, and dips but it could, in. But just... could it have been the meat from inside the claw? Because you pull no. the meat out of a lobster claw, it's claw. Okay, I that's mean, true. Well, it looked like it was just Then I guess his... if you cooked it and... Boiled, no, or if he boiled that's what, it just shell. looked like Zoidberg it was just him. Has yeah. been outside of his shell before yeah. living. Yeah. So and maybe... yeah, and that's not what it looks like. And yeah. if you deep fry, like... But he wasn't cooked, though. But if you deep That's fry true. like and shellfish, it gets red when you sometimes cook it. you can eat the actual shell. Oh. I like when Zoidberg uh, fills up his pipe and then he just eats it. <laughs> <laughs> what is he filling it up with? It looked like a pine cone or something. <laughs> I, I thought it was just or tobacco. Something? I yeah. or just um, weird leaf tobacco. I like, this is the first. So they do the, he calls everybody to the room and, you know. Uh, Scruffy. Scruffy. It's the first time Scruffy talks, mm-hmm. uh, apparently. I thought he talked before this, but I guess not. Um, and, you know. They do that sort of because they needed another character. Never seen you before, yeah, either. And, then, <laughs> and then, but I mean, and they you know acknowledge that by by making it seem like uh, they just brought a character and introduced him needlessly. But then he does become a recurring character. Did anyone ever of our question of spinoff ever say Scruffy? I feel like at least one person has. Okay, at some point, maybe. 
Why didn't they just use Amy or something? She was dead. Who, when did she, she didn't have dead? any gum. Yeah. Oh, she died that's... before. So Bender walks in on Leela oh. killing Hermes. Then she microwaves <clears throat> Bender. Then she turns Bender into a car. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> and I like that, that just Don DiMaggio has... says, yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> Which was actually like when, uh, what was the episode where Bender sold his body and his head was on the car and was do- like the RC car? That was the Richard Nixon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, there's precedent for that. It was a nice callback. I that was not a callback. This is a different universe, Pete. You got to get over it. We're not. We can't compare this episode to any other there's, episodes. I'm. There's a lot of meta levels you can talk about this on. No, it's a treehouse of horrors type episode, there's, right? There's Am I right? No, yeah. There is no treehouse, and there are no. Well, this there's horrors in this episode. It is tales of interest or anthology of interest. This is boring. You're boring, Pete. Um. <laughs> so. They're sitting around uh, the uh, what if machine? No, th- no, no, no. The the room, the room where he d- they do the Sherlock Holmes things, and it looks like his. Uh, are, is was there something else in between that? No. Oh, I, I thought I'm, it's called the living room. Yeah, the part, the parlor, the, parlor, the like the you know, par- yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like Clue, and um, uh, the sword, and then the light goes out. As soon as each person starts to figure out, you know. No, go on. Who. Continue. The murder of is what? And then I they die. Right? That's what happens? I don't know. Michelle, where that are we at when this happens? <laughs> where are we at this episode? It winds no. up it winds up with Leela and Fry getting Well, it on. first of all, there's the the sword that Leela keeps putting people through in that room. But everybody, the order of who she kills changes on the, the sword. Like she, she had to she, pull it out and then do it again. And you know what? My least, uh, the most upsetting part about this part Nibbler. is that she ends up killing yeah. Nibbler. Nibbler. Yeah. Like just a little bit more. But impulsive. it was kind of funny. She's though. going mean, to kill Nibbler and he doesn't, no one would have paid attention to he, him. Yeah, <laughs> and then, you know, he's in the, <laughs> Is that foreshadowing? And he looks hilarious when he's no. dead. He's like, his eyes are open. and you Pete, know. it's not foreshadowing because this is, exists in a different alternative universe it isn't versus canon. this entire <laughs> series. When you keep saying alternative instead of alternate, it, it just brings It's an it. alternative universe. <laughs> so it's full of like... Kurt Cobain R. is still and alive Kurt Cobain. in this one. And, and, uh, Flannel is still in existence. And a new kind of racism. A new kind of racism? Yeah, the alt-right. Bosco shipwreck. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back around. I'm surprised at this point in the episode, uh, both the episode of our show and this show, that you haven't referred to um, or responded to all of my questions with saying, ask something less stupid. Because, <laughs> because when Fry goes to ask his thing, it's it's just, uh, I don't even remember what he asked, but it was something dumb. What right? if- it was what was it? Somebody has to have that note. It was like, what if? I think it was. Uh, what if I had never fallen into the freezer doodle future jiggy? <laughs> but no, before that, he asked before something. That. I oh, think no, he oh. says, "What if Bender was five hundred feet?" Uh, tall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I wanted to see I, it. I want to see it again. I liked it. <laughs> that's and that's. I didn't even write it down because it was so dumb. If Fry didn't fall into the freezing machine and get frozen for a thousand years. Neither Leela nor Bender would work at Planet Express. Yes. No? Not no, necessarily. No. Not necessarily. Bender and Leela could have worked at Planet Express even if Fry didn't get there. In this fact, is... it would make more sense if the universe corrected itself and they ended up working there through, through other... Oh, but so you're right. Wait, that is how wait. they... So now you're, you're going to talk about what makes more sense or not from a quantum physics perspective or something? Well, I mean, you just they're there in the hole, so just guess... What do you think happened? Why do you think they're there? I think whatever Fry's you decide, absence since would have never... negated the entire future aspect, which it started trying to do, but I would think they would have negated the what? If Fry was the catalyst for both Bender and Leela working at Planet Express 1,000 years in the future. No, not necessarily. No, I mean, he's right. I mean, you're right. But Pete's right. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> did, no, I don't believe that because. Lean over I, and I just want to pat you on the back. I look you're at right. this as. Do none of you believe in the multiverse theory? No one what? believes in multiverse yeah, well, sure. theory. Yeah. Did, well, you, know, I mean, did either, you know there that are multiple universes existing all around 
everywhere. You've been spending a lot of time around your roommate, haven't no, you? No, I'm just saying that this is a universe where Fry didn't get frozen, but everything else happened around him. He just didn't get frozen. Right. So yeah, like that's the anti-butterfly that's effect. It. That's the only difference. And did is you notice you Fry don't see uh, frozen to the future? That certain shadow there? No, you didn't. They didn't show that. Did you so, know that the the physicist who um No, but it's possible that he was responsible for pushing him the right way so yeah. he fell into the you know. did, did you know that the physicist who came up with the multiverse theory is the father of the guy who sings in eels? That's fine. I'm Good. just saying. Yeah. i I'm familiar with it. I mean, we came in to discuss this about this episode, and my whole thing about this is that you can't compare it to anything else because these are the no, but alternate within, universes. I, mean, w- within I that, said it right. Within alternate. that universe, though, Pete, Pete's right. It, it's it's weird that they would all be together because the way we know, the way we're, the story we're familiar with is that Fry, you know, I love was this. Responsible this is for like an meeting. alternate it's, universe yes. podcast where Horchie is siding with me. But well, I'm just saying. Um, it's, I did have that thought when I was watching the episode. Yes, yeah. I did, and then I thought to myself, "Who cares? He's going to bring this up." <laughs> did you it, also? It doesn't. If 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 you'd never, are you going to? Who are you going to side with? I don't There's know. There's no I, nobody's no, siding with. You got to side with Horchie and Pete or me. <laughs> where this is just the only difference in this universe is that Fry did Didn't not get. Yeah. Frozen to the future. Things correct themselves, you know, like in right. some... It, they're, they're all, uh, uh, um, you know, vehicles for, for fiction. So whatever, you know, t- uh, time travel theory you want to use, the one where the universe corrects itself or the one where um, it, it doesn't affect it at all. I also or feel just, like that's know, a question that somebody would have asked Matt Groening at, like, a Comic-Con at some point oh, and was like, uh, an anthology of interest one. Is it okay if I mention that? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. Now I'm going to hear this. Uh, Michelle sent me a text, uh, like, two days ago that was, she's like, I bet, or she's like, this reminds me of Pete, and I just saw on the, the text preview, and before, <laughs> before I opened it up, I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what clip it was. It's that episode of The Simpsons where... Um, they have the woman that voices Itchy and Scratchy, and they're at the <laughs> convention the when they introduce episode. Poochie. And uh, there's the kid that's like, <laughs> I, uh, one of them's playing the xylophone. He's like, uh, Itchy hits the xylophone the same uh, twice on the same one, and it's a different note. Is this some kind of magical xylophone that? <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah, that's what that I is exactly accurate. how Pete is. <laughs> I think, I mean, I don't think I'd be that petty about things necessarily unless I was doing it on purpose, but I think I just enjoy consistency in my overarching narrative. I wish I could steer this podcast into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I mean, this this episode finished off with a very uh, strong guest star roster. Yep. Yeah. And I wasn't even sure, that, I mean, I knew Al Gore was real. Yes. And I assumed that Nichelle Nichols was real. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gary uh, Gygax. Gary Gygax, obviously. but I didn't know if that was just him or some guy. But no, it's really him. He was a, a friend to yeah. the and show. And Stephen Hawking. And Stephen Hawking, and Stephen Hawking which I was going to bring up. Like, it, it really is Stephen Hawking's yeah. robot's voice. And he was in like a handful of episodes of The Simpsons, too. Yeah. And it's really him. And it's really, really him. him. The only I mean, they, it's, there's nothing stopping them from saying, oh, it's Stephen Hawking in this because episode, and then just getting the, yeah. the robot but, voice. But it actually was. Yeah. Like Stephen they Hawking got him to is like type actually, it out and, yeah, yeah. I, I saw some interview with him when he was talking about the Simpsons, and he said that it was like the the best cartoon on American television. <laughs> like he's he's really yeah. into the Simpsons. His daughter apparently was a friend of one of the writers on the oh, Simpsons. Yeah? Uh. So that's how he got involved with Matt Groening. Do you think his favorite British cartoon is like Wallace and Gromit? If he's making the distinction for America for all the times that you've British. met Stephen Hawking and, and asked him about I'll, cartoons, I'll, I'll ask what him the you, next time I see him. Um, Perfect. No, that's a thing that, that's come up a lot. People have asked him, "Oh, you know, all this uh, vocal technology has gotten so much better. Why haven't you changed it?" And he's like, "No, that's my trademark. That's you know how I sounded for mm-hmm. so many years." And that's another thing too. When the on the any of the voice you know guest stuff he does, like it's it's you know him if he and you could just take you know that sound and. Did anybody notice on the sign of Panucci's Pizza, the millennial, uh, Millennium Pizza that contains 2,000 meats? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's 2,000 no, different kinds of meat. <laughs> it, that's what the sign on oh. the door as he la- leaves the uh, pizza. Ria. How? The pizzeria. Pizzeria. 
<laughs> is that how he says it? No, later. Uh, the uh, professor. Arthur, he's yeah, like, no. Stephen Hawking in a pizzeria. That's, <laughs> or no, he's like, that's preposterous. And you think he's going to, the, the comic mislead, you think he's going to say something else. Here he is again, and he brought nerds. <laughs> Kind of the story like, of our life, isn't it? I like when they uh, when it first opens up, and he's like, "Hey, look, an ugly, scared guy." <laughs> Boo! <Ooh. laughs> Are any of you icy wiener? <laughs> Is, that's his pizza. I'm icy, whatever. Icy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, crud! You fool! You <laughs> foolish fool! God, is there's like three or four different times where. They have in this epi- or the series where Fry walks into the cryogenics lab and goes, Pizza for I oh, and see they, Wiener. They play it, they, they oh, use the same. Crud. It's the yeah. exact same thing it's every the same time. Animation and too. Like, yeah. yeah. I, Do they like, just replay like the, the actual uh, scene from the yeah. pilot? Yes. Oh, crud. It's like the Wilhelm <laughs> scream almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so Al Gore, it turns out, was a really big fan of, of Futurama. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I didn't read this this week, but I, I know I've read that he was a big fan. I don't know if it was after he was asked to be on it or if he already was before that, but uh, he uh, really liked the show and the D and D thing. I just found this out the other day, and this made a lot. And you, would, you know a lot about the uh, what was the um, what was Tipper Gore's uh, the PMRC? Well, yeah, the PMRC. The whole you know. Yeah. The- uh, do you remember when she was against D and D because it was promoted black magic and, and satanism or she, and yeah th- yeah uh, i guess this was a nod <clears throat> to uh like having all the D stuff to like kind of because they were divorced at that time were they, they divorced at I that time they, i know they are now i, I just yeah, are they I divorced think, still yeah, yeah i just i didn't yeah. know that really i think that's why he did to that like, as a joke was oh, okay, to kind of yeah. like poke and prod at that no well when oh my gosh do you know either way also, it was whether they were still married or not it was done as yeah. kind of like a little That's, to mess with her a little. When they rebroadcasted this episode, instead of the tagline that they had, they did a tagline after the 2000 presidential election that said, starring a guy who is kind of yes. sort of our next president, maybe. Yeah. So is this during the election cycle? This was, uh, what, uh, May 21st, 2000. So yeah, they the re- election broad- would have like, been in November of yeah. 2000. Um, I'd like to bring up uh, an actual real nerd inconsistency that, you know, not like a totally pointless one like Pete would, but uh, I wrote this down independently and then saw it on the, on the InfoSphere they, later. No, they, um, they split up in 2010. Oh, okay. So they were still together at the time. 40 years. And then they're just like, fuck it. This was the... <laughs> done. I heard it was because this she... This is the um, uh, breaking point. She didn't like Prince. She uh, doesn't believe in global warming. Um, possible. <laughs> she she thinks that people that believe in global warming are de- uh, Satan worshippers. Um, El Gore calls Nichelle Nichols Commander Uhura, but she was a lieutenant on the original series, and she's did you? I mean, you didn't notice that, but no, you read no, about no, it. But but no, I'm watching it, and the thing is, like, I've been watching a lot of original series lately. Uh, the insignia for their rank is the gold stripes on their um, wrists, and she has the one for lieutenant, which was, that was her rank. On the show, she's she was a commander later in the movies, but uh, I that was weird. It didn't make any sense. But she was. Com- but if Star maybe- Trek takes place in the future, then how could she be in the past and have a higher rank? No, this is actually no, this for is Star just Trek. Her. This is also past for Star Trek. Yeah, but it also Star Trek isn't real. But this in is this but universe this is or yeah, the drama in, universe. Right. This is taking place in nineteen ninety nine. She's representing the woman Nichelle Nichols that she is in. Real life in this universe, and, and also in maybe in the um, what what are they called? Ranger? What Rangers? The Vice Presidential Action Rangers. Oh, maybe thanks. she is commander. Oh, in that. that's a good good yeah. But when the fabric of space time rips apart because they don't resolve the conflict, mm-hmm. um, I'm disappointed they didn't do a Coco Needles the boss with a like real life. This hand. is everything I hate about this podcast is happening right now. All those people that you find heroes, Orchie. Wanted to murder Fry. Yeah. Well, because he fell down and wanged his head. <laughs> wanged yeah. his head. What does that mean? <laughs> you wanged his head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just hit it really hard. It he depends, wanged it. It depends on what <laughs> website you asked that question to. I call it a hawking chamber. 
<laughs> Nobody mentioned uh, Deep Blue. I felt like I was missing a gag. Like oh, Deep Blue, the chess the playing computer. computer. Yeah. Yes, I thought of that as uh, in our times the computer that was on Jeopardy. Uh, so Deep Blue was a. It, it's like an AI experiment that's been going on for ages and ages, and it. I think it was. Did it play chess against Kasparov or somebody? Yeah, it was you know, like that's that's what it was. Is it it either just played really well or beat a human and was the, the first thing to do such a Did thing? Did he ever so play like, Bobby Fischer? Uh, plus one maze. That was a D and D reference. That was funny. Use my plus one uh, maze. Did I say maze? I'm so, uh, mace. mace. Um, is that like fancy corn? Oh, uh, the beginning of our intro though. Where are we now? That's. Remember that one episode where we got to it and then half of the samples you took were, most of them were from oh, that yeah. one, and this one is the, uh, where are we now? why does he say that? I, I forget. It's when the universe is destroyed and everything is white, and he just goes, oh, where are we oh, now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last one. And as it turns out, all of these were inside the what-if machine for the professor to see if he had invented a thing longer. Which he does later. He does. <laughs> well, well, I can tell you. Does all of this stuff happen for episodes. real then? Well, no. I can Just tell you where we're not. The universe. Sorry. <laughs> I did. Um, Al Gore say that again? very surly. What? Say that again? Uh, Al Gore when he's like, well, I can tell you where we're not, the, the universe. But say it like him? Well, I can tell you where we're not, the universe. Okay, that was terrible. Michelle, you made a bunch of notes. Is there anything in there that we left out that you wish we would have... Uh, mentioned or gotten is to. Is there anything we talked about that uh, you wish we hadn't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we pretty much uh, covered everything I wrote down, except for at the end when the professor says, you know, Stephen Hawking in a pizzeria. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny because uh, there is an episode of The Simpsons where Stephen Hawking, it's like five years later or something, was the episode with Ray Romano. Yes. Um, <laughs> the, where for where some reason, possible buddy, friend, but, yeah. yeah, for some reason, Stephen Hawking is in it, and he's uh, Homer goes, "What are you doing here?" And he says, "Oh, I live here now. I bought the Little <laughs> Caesars down the street. Pizza, 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 pizza." But, but he, he says that pizza. with his computer voice. Yeah, that's beautiful. I bought that little Caesars down on the street. You what do you think they you sound like that? a gargling fish when you say it like that? <laughs> so, what do you have to promote, Michelle? Um. I think a few weeks ago you guys had Dan Bernardi on. I also am involved with Aldous Mustache. I've never so. met that guy. I don't know who <laughs> he's talking about. <laughs> that was a different universe. <laughs> yeah, so I guess just um, look up Aldous Mustache on Facebook. Look him up on YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. Are Check him out. You're promoting him because I'm why? I'm because I'm also involved with all this mustache. I've been in many of their. You've been their climbing shorts. inside of his are mustache. Are you a performer? Are you a writer? Are you, what's your role? Um, I feel like a lot of the times it's like, hey, we need an actual woman. Okay. They're not going <laughs> for the Monty Python deal. I am. I am the. Um, it's a lot Carol like Cleveland. This podcast. <laughs> and, I'm the Carol Cleveland of all this mustache is the joke that I make. So uh, yeah, I mean, and, uh, there's a lot of great um, shorts they've done for the 48 hour film project that I've been involved with. Like um, New Dad was the first one that I did with them. I was in. Um, you can find those on YouTube. Just looking to, up all yeah, this mustache. Yep. Or? Just okay. look up their channel. Um, give them some some likes or what have you on YouTube, whatever it is now. Thumbs up. I, I feel know. like if you just watch it, that counts. If you don't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. Or if you're but just don't do that, because you'll like it. <laughs> yeah, I, but like, I mean, exercise free will, but it's going to be good and you'll like it. So just you keep like that in mind. You like oddball humor. If you like anything that's even somewhat like Tim and Eric, you will love all this mustache. Absolutely. Any other uh, creative pursuits? That's all I got for now. Is there? Do you want people to like hunt you down and find you? Like, if somebody was Dracula, do you want <laughs> the uh, MILF police or any mobs that are after Tom to come after you at any point? <laughs> <laughs> I'll steer clear of the MILF police, but if you want to look That's me wise. up, I don't. I don't really use Twitter that much, but Twitter and Instagram, I'm Shelley's Bones. Yeah, Shelly so if you're a little bit more impulsive, you're a little bit what, more would, impulsive. what would your uh, other <laughs> things be? <laughs> Murdering. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's what all the kids are doing these days. 
Uh, well, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, we certainly went off the rails this time. It got real, real gone. Not to whoever's listening to this, because Tom is going to cut the hell he's gonna out of it. Like he's going to cut the hell out of it. Yeah, make it good. Make it sound good. He's going to polish it up and take it down to a tight 15. Uh, we can be reached at uh, e by email at slurmcastpod at gmail.com, by telephone or SMS text message at 216-438-1077. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter at slurmcastpod, Instagram at slurmcastpod. And then there's our website where you can actually listen to the content we produce, slurmcast.com. And you can find everything on there. Review us in iTunes. Um, you know, that always helps. Every every little bit helps. We love it that you uh, stick around and listen to Th us. There's a another version of this podcast is in, in an alternate universe. There's an alternate, where, there's an where alternate I was version of this podcast. What if we Tom. never started this podcast? <laughs>